from my talk. Uh, so my talk is, uh, is my red to your red, uh, unsupervised alignment of uh, Korea structures. Uh, my name is Masafumi Oizumi uh, from the University of Tokyo. So I hope you enjoyed the, you know, intense discussions. And uh, I think that you must be tired, but uh, yeah, we are going to do it anyway. So, yeah. So first, uh, let me first uh, review the goal of a uh, Korea structure uh, grant project uh, from my view. And uh, I introduced this uh, unsupervised alignment thing. Uh, this is the main topic of uh, today's my talk. And I uh, you know, introduced uh, our results so far, unsupervised alignment between Korea structures, uh, which was applied to uh, you know, color similarity judgment uh, tasks. And we also apply this method to uh, unsupervised alignment between uh, information structures, which is a structure of neural activity data. So let me start from the sort of ultimate goal for the so consciousness studies. So I'm trying to uh, build a mathematical uh, theory of consciousness and uh, very, you know, naively, uh, what we are going to do is that, uh, you know, find a mathematical relationship between Korea T and the neural activity R. So here, the mathematical theory of consciousness is the, you know, transformation, mathematical transformation G, which, you know, converts the neural activity into a uh, Korea. But the problem is that uh, to make a uh, correspondence between C and consciousness and the neural activity, we must first quantify consciousness in some way, right? Or make it a uh, you know, mathematical object in some way. But the big question is how? So you are already familiar with this how, but uh, you know, the thing is, you know, we use uh, you know, relationship between our Korea. So by quantifying the relationship between the where and the other Korea, we can have some way to, you know, quantify the query. So like uh, we quantify the similarity, uh, degree of similarity between red and orange and red and, uh, you know, green and uh, all of that. So the thing is that we need to accumulate uh, many, as many possible, you know, relationships between Korea. That's uh, what we call a uh, Korea structure. So the new research strategy to find the mathematical theory of consciousness is something like uh, this. So naive goal is again that the finding a mathematical relationship between Korea and the neural activity, but we change it to uh, new feasible goal, which is uh, something like find the neural coordinate of Korea structure in the brain. So here we change the C into the Korea, uh, sorry, structure of C, like a Korea structure. And we change, the you know, neural activity into the structure of neural activity and of which we call uh, information structure. And uh, we try to address, uh, you know, how similar are these, you know, different structure, Korea structure and information structure. So if we assess that uh, this is essentially equivalent relationships, then that's it, right? Uh, we found the, you know, mathematical theory of consciousness. That's what we are going to do. So the, to summarize that uh, our strategy is like this. So we present uh, some you know, external stimuli and we first uh, do the psychophysics experiments and we get uh, subjective reports. And uh, example is that uh, similarity judgment reports. And from this report, we extract the structure of C, Korea. And this is a Korea structure, which is embedded in uh, some high dimensional space. And we do the same thing for the neural recording. Like, uh, you know, we do the neural, bunch of neural recording and we accumulate the neural response. And we, again, create the structure of neural re responses to a uh, various stimuli. And then we extract the structure and we get, uh, you know, information structure. And what we are going to do is that to make the correspondence between the, you know, new Korea structure and the information structure. That's a basic strategy and uh, our goal uh, of, you know, this grant group, yeah. So, yeah, so the, our sort of final goal is that uh, making the correspondence between Korea structure and influence of structure, but so far actually we have not yet 
uh, investigate this issue. So today I'll talk about uh, sort of different things. So which is uh, comparing the uh, courier structure from different persons. Like we have a courier structure of person A and the courier structure of person B. The question is uh, how similar are these courier structures? Like the question is, is my let? It's, yeah, so is my let same as your let? Something like this. And also we have our information structure. So neural activity structure of person A and the neural activity structure of person B. And the question is again, that the, whether these two information structure are similar with uh, across subjects. So that's the main issue of today's talk. So, you know, again, that the, the you know, ultimate goal is that uh, to address, you know, the question, is my right same as your right? For example, that uh, we are interested in something like, you know, do children feel the same way as adults? Or to what extent does the language or culture affect the courier structure, which is uh, a topic of today's actual discussion here. Huh? So to address these questions, we need to have some method a measure to qualify the how similar these two structures are, right? So we invented uh, such a measure to quantify the two different structures. So to explain about the, you know, how we quantify the different structures, we first need to uh, uh, stress the importance of the, you know, unsupervised alignment. So here, the important thing is that, uh, you know, we cannot assume that the same stimuli, like a red stimulus, evokes the same conscious experience uh, between different persons. We cannot assume this because that is the very question we are going to address, right? Is my red same as your red? Then that uh, usually to compare the structure, we somehow somewhat assume that some correspondence like a, a person is red is the same as you know person B is red and the power purple blue blue. So assuming these correspondence, then we compare how similar are these relationships. That's a conventional method, and that's a called supervised alignment. We do the totally different thing, right? We do this, right? The, the left hand side is totally blind, right? We don't know any color labels about the person B. And then we ask that uh, this, my red, maybe this, or, you know, maybe this, or maybe this, or maybe around here. We are going to address uh, all of the possibilities of correspondence. That's what we, are, we need to do to address this somewhat philosophical question is my red same as your red. So we need such kind of measure, but luckily we have some established method to quantify the similarity without assuming any correspondence between, you know, Kara or Kara Korea. So here, important point is only the similarity relationships between Kara Korea, like, like a red and blue or red and green, within each subject is available. So we know the you know, similarity between Kara Korea in person A. And also we know the similarity relationship uh, in person B. We know that. But uh, there is no given correspondence between Korea structures across subjects. We don't know that uh, my red corresponds to your red. That's the problem setting. And uh, we, what we do is that uh, I need to skip the mathematical details, but uh, what we try to do is to align these two structures so that the you know, point whose relationship between the other point is brought close together. Like this is pair to pair matching. And the cost is something like you know, similarity minus similarity in the other side. So the, you know, this pair is you know, sort of transported to the other pair with you know, low cost if this D relationship is similar. Something like this. So this is a uh, uh, specific uh, mathematical formulation, but uh, I'll skip this. So the important point is that uh, we don't assume any given correspondence 
and we just uh, try a bunch of possibility of correspondence. Then we find the some optimal solution to match the two structures. Then this method has been already successfully, you know, used in the language translation. This is really remarkable uh, thing, I think. So like uh, we have, uh, you know, structure of language X, like uh, language uh, English and the structure of, you know, uh, Germany. And then we do the unsupervised alignment, meaning that we don't know any given correspondence between the words in English and in Germany. And then we do the just, uh, you know, this unsupervised alignment. And it has been shown that, uh, you know, unsupervised alignment works very well for this language translation task. So we expect that uh, this method can be used even for, you know, query structure uh, alignment thing, right? So I did that, uh, we did that. So this work uh, has been done, you know, by Genji. And, uh, you know, the, this data is from now's rough and uh, earlier and now uh, collected this data. So we have, uh, you know, 93 color similarity judgment, subject to judgment. And uh, this, you know, similarity matrix, or well, the similarity matrix between 93 cars look like this. And uh, you notice that uh, these two structures are quite similar. And by the way, this is, uh, you know, uh, the similarity judgment from a group of subjects, actually. But uh, these two groups uh, do not contain the same subject. So the non-overlap subject group. And we made the, this uh, dissimilarity matrix in group one and in group two. And we try to assess that whether we can align these two structures without any correspondence. Okay, so, and uh, first we, uh, you know, uh, try to ex uh, extract its uh, embeddings or, you know, vectors of each color in some, you know, arbitrary, you know, three dimensional space. And it looks like this. And uh, we are going to align these two structures without looking at the uh, label, labels of colors. So what we do is that uh, we don't use any color labels. So that's a totally, you know, black thing. And uh, we do the unsupervised alignment based on structure. And then finally we evaluate uh, with color label because we know that uh, this is, uh, you know, our response are given by some, you know, red color or blue color. But uh, we use this color at the final evaluation. And uh, we check that the whether the, you know, my red or person is red is the same as a uh, person B's red, this kind of issue. And we found that uh, we really successfully aligned uh, the same color, uh, you know, between the two different, uh, you know, query structures without looking at, uh, you know, given stimulus. So this means that, uh, you know, this uh, matrix uh, shows that, uh, you know, uh, some kind of alignment uh, plan uh, from uh, group one structure to group two structure. And diagonal elements shows that, uh, you know, same color corresponds to the same color uh, in the uh, different group. And some, we, this is sort of 80% uh, uh, correct match. But uh, even though the, you know, some miss uh, plan, miss transportation plan, uh, we found that uh, these things are also, you know, transported, uh, aligned to a uh, similar colors. So this sort of mistake is not that bad in a sense. And uh, this is a visualization of the unsupervised alignment. Again, that uh, we extract uh, sort of embeddings by uh, multi-dimensional MDS scaling, and the group one structure is looking like, look like this, group two structure look like this, and we do the, you know, answer box alignment, and uh, this look like this. So as you can see, that the group one's embedding is shown in, you know, circle, and the group two's embedding is shown is cross. And you can see that the same color is aligned to the similar colors, right? So this means that we can, you know, successfully align the query structure without any given labels. So this suggests that, you know, query structures are consistent across subjects. But we haven't uh, checked the, whether this can be done, like a one-to-one, one, uh, one subjects to one subjects, uh, 
alignments are matching. Yeah. So, so far I have showed that, uh, you know, uh, unsupervised alignment of uh, 93 color similarity judgments. And we do the same thing uh, in the nine color similarity judgment tasks. Uh, this is from Yamada-san's lab. And uh, this was done by uh, Ken, Ken Takeda. And uh, Hirao-san, Miyama-san, Yamada-san collects uh, this data. So we do the same thing, but uh, with a small number of colors. Like uh, we have only nine colors. And we do the similarly multi-dimensional scaling and we extract the embedding in three-dimensional space. But we found that you know, pairwise alignment between subjects did not work well. So one, one versus one alignment somewhat did not work well. So we instead, we used a uh, different strategy, like uh, we use all of the subjects. And then using all of the subject data, we mapped the, these all of data into one single common space. And then we found the body center, which is the center of structure among all of the subjects. And that we try to align the, you know, each subject's data to the body center, which we computed somewhat. And then we found that, I mean, first that, uh, of course, that the, this, you know, embeddings are totally, you know, uh, not aligned at all at the first place. But uh, we, if we apply the, you know, answer about the alignment thing, then we found that uh, all of the subjects, like the six, 31 subjects, are aligned in the single common space. And uh, as you can see that the similar colors are aligned to similar colors. And this has been done again that uh, without any labels. That's an important thing. So, and also we did a similar thing in the you know, neural activity data. So this was done by uh, Kota Abe and uh, Aozora Matsuda. So we used, uh, by the way, so in the, this grant proposal, we need to do, uh, for this grant proposal, we need to do this uh, in fMRI data, but uh, we found that the fMRI data is a lot noisy and uh, we cannot find the, uh, you know, stable uh, similarity matrix uh, in fMRI data. So first we instead use the sort of easier data, which is uh, given by our RM Brain Institute. And this is a large open data set where neural activities in mouse visual cortexes to various types of visual stimuli were recorded. And the recording method is two, like a two photon cars imaging. Uh, so this is a single cell resolution and also neuropixels recording, which is also, again, the single cell re resolution. And we use the natural movie stimulus. And uh, it has been already shown, even though they're, you know, the same mouse, actually that uh, it's well known that uh, there is representative drift, meaning that uh, even though the stimulus is exactly the same, but, uh, you know, neural responses in single cell level is vary across time. Like uh, even in the you know same day, uh, these cells activities, each cells activities change over time. So this is called representational drift. But uh, it's also shown that uh, you know this similarity matrix somewhat stable across time. So we expect that uh, we can answer the alignment for uh, you know similarity matrix if it's stable. So we did that. So we again use uh, you know natural movie stimulus, and this is uh, you know shoot, sort of show the mouse uh, similarity matrix for uh, this natural movie stimulus. By the way, this is again neural activity data. So we computed the similarity of our you know neural response patterns to each movie frame. Okay, and we collected uh, six hundred neurons from sixteen mice. So this is this consists of actually sixteen mice data. So we call it a pseudo mouse. And uh, we again uh, collected uh, 16 or uh, whatever uh, mice data in pseudo mouse two. And then we did the you know, unsupervised alignment between these two similarity matrix. And then we found that actually this is really, really good. Like uh, we can align all of the you know, movie frames with 100% accuracy. So we, again, we did not give the movie frame information beforehand. We did it in Braille, but we can align it uh, perfectly. And we also showed that the same thing can be done in calcium imaging data. 
So that's all. So we, as a summary, we established the way to, you know, quantify the similarity between Korea structures or, you know, information structures without assuming any correspondence between Korea. And we showed that we can, you know, successfully align Korea structures or, you know, information structure without assuming any correspondence. If these two structures are similar enough, if it's not, we cannot do that, of course. So it will be interesting to uh, compare Korea structures or information structures between, for example, adults and children, which may be dissimilar, or between humans and AI, artificial neural networks. That's a future direction uh, we are going to pursue in the you know, future research. Yeah, thank you.